Alright, welcome to creating the circle of fists. Now, the way to create a circle of fists is going to be a very useful, helpful tool for the uh, musician to help learn your key signatures, learn your sharps, learn your flats, all these different things. So let's build this. First, start with a circle. Very simple circle of fists, right? So now, what we're going to do is we're going to put marks at each of the 12 points as you would on a clock. Okay, so each one of those 12 points. Now, each of these is going to represent something we'll talk about in just a minute. But what I want you to look at is in the top left corner, I've put a series of letters. F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. These are letters that are basically uh, going to structure our entire circle of fits. We use them a lot in this, so just be aware that this is going to be very useful. Now, one of the ways you can remember this is by using the mnemonic Father Christmas gave Dad an electric blanket. Good way to remember this. Father Christmas gave Dad an electric blanket. See how the each of the uh, first letters correspond to the letters in the order. All right, so let's talk about now what we're going to use this for. We're going to take and we're going to put the letter C at the top of the circle. Let us see at the top of the circle. Then what we'll do is use that order and put it those notes in order around the circle of fifths. So we're going to talk about the C. On the left side of the C is the F, and then we just go on. F, G, D, A, E, and B. All right. Now, to fill in the other ones, we need a different one. We need uh, a different set of letters. In this case, we need B, E, A, D, G, C, F. A good way to remember this is blanket exploded and Dad got crispy feet. So B E A D G C F. It's a good way to do this. Now we're going to start filling in on the left side. We're not going to start at the B. We're going to start up at the F, the way it was before. And we're going to go to the left this time. Okay. So F. Then we're going to have a B. But I'm going to change the B a little bit. I'm going to add a flat to it. And we want to distinguish this one from the other B. So we're going to add flats to everything that we add on now. So the next one is going to be E flat, then A flat, D flat, and G flat. Now, one of the confusions that people have about the circle of fifths is the idea that it, what the concept of a circle of fifths is. So I'm going to draw over here. I'm going to draw. Our alphabet. And we're going to start at C. We're going to make C number one. And I'm going to go five notes up from there. So one, two, three, four, five. And look where I end up, G. I'm now going to take five from G, starting on G on one, and go five from G, and see where we go. One, two, three, four, five. And look at that, I'm at D. So. Building the circle fifths is exactly that. You are building fifths, an interval of a fifth from C to G, G to D, D to A, A to E, and so on. Now, where that kind of gets a little confusing is down here at B and G flat, which for now, we don't need to worry about. Okay, it's, that's going to be explained in just a little bit. But that one technically is a little bit of a sixth, but it will make sense in just a minute. From there... As you can see, G to D, D to A, A to E, E to B, B to F, and we're back around to C. All right, so that's the idea of the circle of fifths. You're creating fifths around the circle. All right, now, one more thing to add to this, and that is I'm going to start to add some numbers. And that is zero at the top. So it's kind of like military time where noon is zero or 12 o'clock is zero. We're going to list all of the ones on the right side according to numbers. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we go from the other side the same direction or the same way. One, two, three, four, five, and finish with six. Now, this is going to be very important in the next thing that we do when we talk about sharps and flats. So, this is our basic structure of our circle of fits. Right. So, here it is again. And what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about sharps and flats. Now, a sharp 
raises the note a half a step. And vice versa, a flat lowers the note one space or lower one half step. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect these together in this circles and fifths. So, for instance, if we want to do sharps, we want to talk about sharp keys. The sharp keys are going to start at the top and go to the right on the circle. So, in this case, we are going to have G will have one sharp. D is going to have two sharps. A, three sharps, and so on. If we want to learn about the base or the, the, the flat side, we go the opposite direction, where one, F is going to have one flat. B flat is going to have two flats. E flat, three flats, and so on, all the way up to six flats. So now, this is, if you do that and you write this out, this is what it ends up looking like. Okay, so you can see how up here in the top, C has zero, G has one sharp, two sharps, three, four, five, and flats, we have one flat, two flats, three flat, four, five, and six. Now look carefully at the bottom. You see that there are two notes, one in parentheses, one that's written out. What you see is the one that's written out without the parentheses. So under six flats, you're going to see that's the key of G flat. But enharmonically, meaning the same sound, the, the note F sharp is the same as G flat. Okay. Now, remember I talked about how we had that weird thing between B and G flat? Well, if you count up from B five notes, you have B, C, D, E, and F. One, two, three, four, five. There's that fifth we were missing before, is the, the combination between those two. So there's the fifth, and that's how it explains it, is the idea of the enharmonic. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the enharmonics is that they still add more notes. Remember at the beginning we talked about how we were missing a couple of the flat side. Remember we had the C flat and the F flat? Well, here's the C flat right here. That's the C flat right there. And if we follow our pattern, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This will be seven flats. So that will be all seven notes will be flatted. Now, the one that was weird was the F flat. Now, the problem with the F flat is that you would end up having eight flats. And since there's only seven notes, you'd have one doubled up. So we don't use the F flat at all. That is not a key that we use. C flat we do, E F flat we don't. Instead of F flat, we just put E. It's a lot simpler. So going the other direction, and okay, we have one, two, three, four, five sharps. F sharp, that bottom one, in pattern will be six sharps. The next one, C sharp, on the next one will be seven sharps. Okay, so if you have C flat or C sharp, you're going to have seven of something. Whereas if it's just plain C, it's up at the top and it's zero. So let's now figure out how these are written out. Okay, we know that A has three sharps. We know that D flat has five flats. But where do we put them? So let's figure that out. Here's our, here's our circle of fifths and our order, sharps and flats. So we're going to talk about the order of sharps. Now here's where this Father Christmas gave Dad an electric blanket comes in very handy. It is the order that you put the sharps. And the blanket exploded and, get, and Dad got crispy feet is the order of flats. So when you're putting notes on the staff for the sharps, you're going to go F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. 
So that's the order of the sharps in the treble clef and in bass clef and, and alto clef, any clef that's there, that's the order of sharps. Now for flats, you use the other one. Okay, so you have uh, blanket exploded and dad got crispy feet is B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. And those are your order of flats. So let's do a couple of practices. Okay, I'm just going to pick, uh, let's say, one, let's say D, two sharps. So we look up at our sharps and we figure out we have F, C, G, D, A, E, B. We only need the first two. So we have F sharp and C sharp. So now let's pick a different one. Erase that and pick a different one. Let's pick D flat, five flats. So we look up at our base and we have one, two, three, four, five flats. We have B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. Do a couple more, one more of the sharp ones. Erase this. Let's pick a high sharp one. Let's pick, um, let's pick this one. Let's pick this. Now I know it says G flat, but remember G flat is also the same as F sharp. So we need six sharps. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have F, C, G, D, A, and E. And there you go. Here's your key of F sharp. And let's pick one more of the flats to get practice with that. We have, let's pick, let's pick, let's pick the hard one. Let's pick C flat. That's the same over here, but notice it's not five. It's going to be in order. It's going to be seven flats. So let's pick, we're just going to do all seven. So we have B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and F flat. And that is how you build key signatures. So I hope this has been helpful for you to be able to recognize and create your own circle of fits. Remember that your, your favorite words are Father Christmas, gave dad an electric blanket, and blanket exploded, and dad got crispy feet. Will help you not only create your circle of fits, but also create where you put your sharps and flats so that you end up looking, having something that looks like this. This is the ultimate goal for memorization of the circle of fits.